say, you know, Gamesium isn't an ode to an 80s. The 80s is an ode to us because it's not only an arcade, it's a huge upgrade to the arcade. It's better than it ever was. So this is our 8++ plus plus Classics row, as we call it. Uh, it's pretty much like the, the really, really good classics that everyone loves. And so they're just known as the best of the best of the best. And basically these are all like the really good arcade games and you know you would never find this anywhere today you can't really find either one of these today anywhere and uh, even back in the day you would never find this many good games in an arcade so this is really like prime arcade real estate here because it's just like even back in the 80s you wouldn't find this many good games so it's really kind of breaking boundaries and you know you wouldn't find this even back then let alone now and now you can find it here in 2019 at GameZM it's it's better than the 80s that's what we always say so we got Miss Pac-Man, Galaxian, everyone remembers Galaxian but even more people remember the sequel Galaga this is probably one of the top games of all time but we got Track and Field which is a great classic, extremely rare game to find now, very, very collectible and expensive. Asteroids, everyone remembers Asteroids. It has the vector monitor, so it doesn't use pixels, it makes lines like the machines and hospitals do. Real special monitor in there, they only made it until 1983. Space Invaders, it's probably the face of gaming worldwide, everywhere. It's just, you know, it's, it's probably the number one classic. Can't beat it, but you can play it here in the original form. This is the first time they ever released it in Games Am. Got Mortal Kombat, uh, Storm the World in the 90s. Everyone remembers that one. That's why it's an A classic here at Games Am. We got Super Mario Bros., the game that was so popular, they actually ported it from the console to the arcade completely backwards, but it came out in the arcade and we have it here. Same game as it is on the NES. Then we got Mario Bros. One of Mario's first appearances in gaming and you know, Mario and Luigi is still a huge franchise here in 2019 today. Classic. So all the kids come in and they, they say, Mario, you know, I, rem I know Mario even though this game is now over 40 years old. And Super Hang On is a great, great racing game. You know, you can pick your music as you play. A really advanced racing game. Bars, the real throttle, the real brake, real buttons, real you know tachometers. Even though they don't move, they light up, and it's just it's like a real motorcycle. And back here we got the pinball row. We range from all over the pinball spectrum in terms of age and collectability and rarity. So we got a newer game here, like F14 Tomcat. Just got this in about a week ago or two, and this is like a brand new game. So. These games are really, really expensive and you'd be really hard pressed to find them anywhere else these days. Tom um, and here's another great 80s classic. So many people remember this game. And then we get back to the 70s here. This is Magnetron. Got Stratoflight. These are all like the really good classics of this era. From every era we try to pick the best, but we also have some deeper cuts as we like to call them, more rare stuff and fun stuff that not everybody knows about. Liberty Bell, great game from Williams. This is Lady Luck, which is actually came out in 1965, but it's actually really crazy because it has enough circuitry inside that while you play the game, you actually play blackjack against a computer per se, but this doesn't even have a brain or a processor. It's all relays, coils, and like all of these, relays, coils, and switches, yet it can still play blackjack against you. It's, it's crazy. This is a 1962 Gottlieb Mayfair. Or 1962 to 64 about and this is a great game but it's very hard because the tiny flippers and the flippers are so far spaced apart very very hard game but absolutely a great game and as you can see it's in mint condition like most of our games are it's just a really great condition game especially for its age it's a game called Jive Time and this one's cool because it has the big spinner in the back here you can kind of pick your own reward and uh, we had this one actually shipped here from California because they're so hard to find. So this got shipped all the way out here free. Crazy, crazy adventure this game has had. That's for sure. This game is called Superstar and this is by Williams. This is a great game. And one of our fastest playing EM games. EM games are the ones without the circuit boards and they're all the relays, the old ones. And this game actually came out of Williams in Chicago, Illinois, like all the Williams games did. But it actually went to Sweden, as you can see down here. It has the one Krona slot there. 
and it actually somehow, you know, before we owned it, it made its way back to the U.S. And, you know, we didn't have any part in it, we didn't own it, so it's just, it's a complete mystery, and that's kind of adds to the allure of it. We have no clue how that happened, but it's here now, and it's back, and it's at Games End. This is Valley Skyrocket. This is an extremely rare game. They only made a couple of these. And because when the motor runs, it'll actually do a light effect that lights up this whole firework completely before its time. I'd say 10 years before its time. You know, they only really replicated effects like that as soon as they added circuit boards. And that was still, you know, seven to 10 years off from this game. So they, and the motor was so expensive, they ended up not making any. So, you know, it's rare because it's great and it's rare because it's, very low produced, so very hard to find, very expensive, just because of those two things. And then it starts our Godly Wedgehead collection, so we got the Nibs here, and then we got Team One, and then we got Foursquare, and Sky Jump. We're kind of going through all these, making them perfect before we put them out, and then we got High Hand, and then we got Wild Wild West back there, which is one of my favorite games. And this is only a couple of our Godly Wedgeheads. I'm actually a huge Wedgehead collector, and I have a bunch of Wedgeheads, at least I think 15 or so. We're still getting them all going. And these are the most collectible pinball machines ever. And I mean, I got 15 of them. That was a lot of hard work and a lot of states driven through to get those. And then we kind of go over here to our cocktail table machines. A lot of people remember these. These are great for playing head to head and having a conversation over. In fact, I had a great conversation over this game yesterday with a family member. And, you, know, you can put your snacks and your drinks on here while you play. You know, you don't even have to stop playing. They eat or drink here. Even our tables are games. That's how we love games so much. Then we got Mr. Do. If you remember this game, it's in a Mr. Do's castle. But right now we're running regular Mr. Do in that because people remember that one a bit more. But we like to swap them around, even if it's just the circuit boards. And then going back over here, we got some more games back here we're still working on, like a real shuffle bowler. You don't see those anymore. Those are more in the bars and the arcades, but we wanted to include that. We got Arkanoid 2 here, which we're still working on. Actually, unfortunately, went down the other day, like arcade machines that are 30, 40 years old like to do. There's a Sega Turbo here we're restoring, uh, almost done, and it's going to be better than any Turbo in the world. A lot of people know this game now because it was in the Wreck-It Ralph movie recently. It's real popular now. It was popular back then, too, so it's like a double, double classic. That'll go in our A++ Classics row. And we got a newer game here, Simpsons Bowling, that we're redoing. A lot of people remember this game, and it's actually pretty modern, so it's really, really fun. Even the retro ones are fun, too, of course. And we got Shootout here. This is a really, really weird and interesting Data East game. Um, we actually just got this one in, and it's very, very fun. This is a Twin Eagle cabinet where we actually have UN Squadron in it. UN Squadron is actually known as probably the best shoot 'em up game of all time. And uh, a lot of the people that play these type of games, they'll come in here and just pretty much run to this game because it is, it is really the best shoot 'em up game uh, of all time. They, they love flying the planes and shooting the bullets. And that was more, that was towards the 90s. This was still in the 80s, but towards the 90s they started to do those types of games and people go crazy for them. We're rebuilding our Lethal Enforcers right now. If you went down the other day, we actually have another gun, a game board in here, Police Trainer, which you can choose between. Our Area 51, the circuit board, is coming back on Friday. As you can see, we're all we go through all sorts of restorations here and renovations, and we're always adding more. So newer games like this that we just brought in, uh, we kind of go through and we have to fix them. But we're always adding more, and we try not to make it take too long. That's for sure. Rough Ranger is a great game. It's kind of like a copy of the game Rolling Thunder, like a lot of more people know. But this game actually has two players at once, so which is why I kind of prefer it over Rolling Thunder. So that's why this is here. It's like two player at once Rolling Thunder. I love that game. Continental Circuit. Uh, it was, there's a typo actually. It's Continental Circus in the board, but it was because it came from Japan and they translated it wrong. So it is actually Continental Circuit. And uh, this is actually the first game I ever got, and still one of my favorites to this day. Uh, I actually only got this working about a month ago because the problem was so advanced, I got terribly bad luck of getting this for my first game. It actually took me several years to get to the skill level to fix this game and buy more parts and do all this kind of crazy stuff to get it working. So this game was a real challenge, but it paid off because you know it's one of that great games, and I always have the memory of getting this as my first game. Over here we have 
Superman in a life force cabinet. Superman, everyone knows Superman. He's like the number one superhero of all time. You know, the whole world knows him. And he is an arcade game. A lot of people don't know that, but a lot of people do remember the game. It's a, it's a great, great game. You can play with two people at once, beat it all the way through with our unlimited gaming pass, no quarters. Everyone loves that. They go. They always go to the end because it's so good. This guy's over here playing Golden Axe. Classic Sega game, and everyone loves that game. Having a good time, guys? Yeah. Great. Over here is Russian Attack. This is actually the second game I got. And it's actually my favorite game of all time. It's a super fun game. As you can see, he's actually getting pretty far there. Second or third level. It's a very hard game, but beating that game is fulfilling, I'll tell you what. We got some newer fighting games here, like SBC Chaos. This is a pixel style game, but it actually came out in 2004, so they kind of, that's at the point in gaming, unlike everything else in here, they were actually doing the pixely art on purpose um, to kind of make it look cool, and they started to realize retro was cool, so we kind of have this game here to represent that. Even though in 2004 they could do a lot more by that time, you know, it goes to show those pixel graphics are timeless, and you know, everything here was pixely because it had to, except that game. And then over here we have the House of the Dead series. We have House of the Dead 1 and House of the Dead 3, which is crazy. You know, you never see them anywhere, especially not both of them. So these games are great. But in the, these games are actually on location in arcade today, in arcades all around the world. But they're not on free play like they are at Game Museum. We do unlimited play. And, you know, these games are on location right now as we speak, right this second, for about a dollar a play and a dollar for a continue. So you break even at these games in GameZM so fast. And, you know, these games have continues, which when you die, you can pay more to keep going, which is also about a dollar on location. So here on GameZM, free play, free continues on all of our games. And on location, you know, these games are so long and they take so many continues, as all of you know. You know, it costs about $100 to beat the game. Not here. You can get our unlimited pass, beat it all the way through, and beat everything else for one price. That's a great deal. But yeah, everyone loves teaming up on these games, you know, fathers and sons, husbands and wife, and some people even play themselves and do the two players at once, which is always cool. These are great classics, and this was like the biggest game of the 90s, and you never see it anywhere. And it's, it's massive, it's hard to move, but we got it in here, and it looks amazing. We love that game. Over here is a two-player Royal Rumble arcade. Everyone loves wrestling. We're rebuilding that right now. That's out getting repaired in California right now. Over here, we got Ball, which we're currently restoring. That's actually a very rare Ball machine, and we're still rebuilding the electronics. Um, we try to basically keep a number of games to like, have a great arcade, but then we do have the stuff we're always adding, so by all means, don't let the games we're working on fool you, because you know, all the games that do work, they're pretty much the size already or above of any other arcade, so don't let the games that are down fool you. We got mostly everything working and a huge number of games, but we're always adding new stuff like this that we're going through. And we kind of like to do it out here because it lets people see you know, how much work we do and kind of the process of getting these old games working games. I mean, everyone loves people, and you can even play while we're doing it. You can come in and you can keep your own score, but you can still definitely play ski ball while we're working on it. It's a great, great fun game. It takes a lot of skill. There's actually a newer game here called Buzzy Buzzy Bee, and you actually catch the bees and put them in the pot. And you know, me and my fiance Mallory, the owners of this, we actually included this as a ode to our childhood because I'm 21 and she's 20. So we remember playing this at the uh, local ticket arcade chain, and it's just so fun. And we thought, you know, it would be laughed at, it'd be kind of like, why did you guys put this here? Even though, so we wanted to do it because we loved it, but then we didn't expect that everyone else loved it too, and it's actually one of our most popular. Their games, you know, we see we see grown men getting addicted to this game and going for the high score. And it, it is really so fun. Such a unique game too. It's the single exception to our retro rule in that terms of like that ticket games. But you know, it's just one of the coolest and fun games. So it, we have a bit of everything, and it's great for the kids. This is our arcade legends cabinet, and it actually has a bunch of games. There's that mouse trap that you were talking about. And we, you know, so many different classics like Missile Command and Moon Patrol. 
this kind of fills the gaps for games that we haven't found yet and are still looking for and we don't have dedicated cabinets for. It actually saves a lot of room so we can put even more in. So this is kind of like a compilation cabinet. You know, you got classics like Joust, you know, Robotron is in here. Defender. Everyone loves Defender. That's like our number one most requested game and it's, it's here and it, it plays great on this game. There's so many different games. You got the trackball for games like Crystal Castles and Centipede that are on here. So many classics and then so many deep cuts on here too. There's hundreds of 125 games on here. Then we come over here to some of our games we're still working on. Like Gorgar is actually going out today. That's finished. That'll go on the arcade floor today. And we have Jungle Lord, a really great classic by Williams. This is also by Williams. Williams was the, really the main player in pinball at this point, and we just love these games. These are extreme classics, and we, we really got them all here. It's, it's going really great. And, you know, that's, that's Game Z, and we got even more we're working on here. I got a duplicate Asteroids because it was too good to pass up. That'll probably be for my personal collection or to take some parts off of to make our other one even better, but you don't need two Asteroids, so I'll figure out something to do with that. We got Double Dragon 2. Double Axle, Chase HQ, everyone remembers this one. This one's just needs a new monitor we're seeking right now, and then that's good to go. And Pac-Man, we just finished rebuilding, repainting, restoring, got the new T-molding on, the new marquee. And you know, we're, we finished all the brand new wiring because we wanted to make it really efficient and nice. Uh, that was, that needed to replace, so we did all that. I do all my work myself, even though I'm 21 years old. You know, I taught myself how to do this. Been doing it for five years, and it's, I, I surprise myself sometimes with how much I know uh, how to do this. I mean, look at all these wires. You gotta know where they all go, and it's, it's crazy, and it's, it's a labor of love, that's for sure. It's a labor of love. And uh, this game's going out soon, so that's great. Everyone loves Pac-Man. He's the face of every arcade. And he's, that's why he's going right in the front over there next to Miss Pac-Man. Is his bride. <laughs>